when we're adding or subtracting rational uh, polynomials, the main important thing is we need to get them to be common denominators, right? You can't subtract these unless they have common denominators. So what I can do is find my least common denominator. And Will, when I'm looking at this and I want to determine my least common denominator, I know it's going to have to contain both of these denominators, which will be cosecant of theta minus 1 times cosecant of theta plus 1. So what I'm going to do on both sides is I'm going to multiply by the other term to get my LCM. Okay. Does everybody see how you're multiplying to get my LCM on the top and the bottom? All right. Now, we know that we, this is also a difference of two squares, so that's actually going to provide me with, um, when I multiply that out, I'm actually going to get cosecant squared of theta minus 1. right? So I can simplify that on top. So when I multiply this across, I have now cosecant of theta minus 1 over, um, over cosecant squared of theta minus 1 minus cosecant of theta plus 1 divided by cosecant squared of theta minus 1. Now I have a rational expression with the exact same denominator. I can combine them. And so I'll have cosecant of theta minus 1. Now make sure when you subtract this, you subtract the whole term. right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the subtraction sign outside my parentheses, cosecant of theta plus 1, just to make sure that I don't make any mistakes when I'm subtracting. And that's going to be all over cosecant squared of theta minus 1. All right. Now, the reason why I say that is because now, remember, you need to apply that, that negative sign to cosecant and to that negative 1, or to that positive 1. So really, what that does is now that's turning that into a negative cosecant and a negative 1. All right. Well, guys, you can see cosecant of theta minus cosecant of theta, that's going to subtract the 1. Negative 1 minus a negative 1. Wait. Oh, that's, I forgot to turn that positive. So it should be negative 1 minus 1, not minus a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2. So therefore, that's just going to represent a negative 2. And then you say cosecant of squared of theta minus 1. I can use my uh, Pythagorean identities to rewrite that as cosecant. Cosecant goes with cotangent, right? So I can rewrite this as a negative 2 over cotangent of theta. Oh, cotangent squared. I'm sorry. All right. But what is, yes? How do you get negative 2? Negative 1 plus negative 1. It's negative 1. I'm sorry, that was a positive 1. It's negative 1. Um, minus 1. So negative 1 minus another 1. Because the, um, this is a positive cosecant. Positive cosecant minus cosecant is 0. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Right? OK, so now if we look at this, well, if I have a negative 2 up top, that's cool. But now I have a cotangent and cotangent squared in the bottom. What is the same thing as 1 over cotangent squared? Tangent, tangent squared. So my final answer is going to be negative 2 tangent squared of theta. Right? Cot 1 over cotangent, that's the same thing as negative 2 as 1 over cotangent squared of theta. 1 over cotangent squared of theta 
is the same thing as tangent squared. Do you guys agree with that? It's just all in those identities. Okay. So that's after um, 